Whenever he hears that bone pop, wait a minute! Sunset for a count of one, two! Oh my heaven! That was so close, and in my estimation, that would have been a major upset. But now, here's the thug doing what the thug does best, and that's breaking the rules, utilizing the ring ropes. To choke James Grizzly, referee Eddie Sharkey, warning the thug. That's going to have no effect on this guy. No, the thug, he doesn't uh, go by what any referee says, whether it be Eddie Sharkey or Jay Soltis. And look at this, Mick. Look at this. Oh, picked him up. A knee to the kidneys. Right? Right? And now, look, he's trying to pin him. In for the cover, count of one. And a kick out by James Grizzly. And I think the thug is a little bit surprised, although for heaven's sakes, that was a sloppy cover. No hook of a leg, no nothing. Very arrogant on the part of the Chi-Town thug. Very quickly want to say hello to Brett and Michelle, to Elena and Elise for the greatest wrestling fans anywhere. Backslide. He's got him for a count of one and two. Oh, not quite three. The thug continues the assault. On James Grizzly, he's got him backed up in the corner. Setting him up apparently for that Irish whip all the way across the ring. Hard into the buckle, follows up with the clothesline. And when you're backed up in the corner, there's no place for you to go. You're sandwiched between the clothesline, the arm, and that top turnbuckle, and you're in trouble. Well, you know, especially when you have a man of, of, of the Chi-Town Thugs uh, girth running at you in that corner and you don't move. You're going to feel that. That's going to hurt really, really bad. But look at this. Mr. Grizzly's getting up again. This is an amazing show of determination and grit on the part of James Grizzly with a close line of his own. Incredible. The staying power of James Grizzly hanging in there with the thug, and he drops him once again. Well, again, even early on in the career of the Chi-Town Thug, James Grizzly would have to be considered pulling off a major upset if he was to get the Duke here. Jockeying for position in the corner. Wait a minute, the Thug grabs the legs. Count of one. Wait a minute, sports on the ropes. Oh, come on. No. Just a minute. Did he get the Duke? He did indeed. You know, I actually feel sorry for you people sitting home all year watching them lose their no-name Minnesota Vikings. You want to see some real athletes? You check out Wayne the Train Bloom, the black top bully, the hater, and the judge on the IWA. Just like Bloom says, one thing you're going to see yourself, you're going to see a street people off. That's right. The IWA stands for I Want Action. And if you want to see some real action, tune into this channel starting in January. That's right! The IWA is where real athletes are! Here's for the biggest and for the meanest professional wrestlers in the game! So if you want to see the best, then come on and see us! That's right! The IWA! My God, you talk about a rogues gallery of professional wrestlers! How'd you like to have that group over for dinner or something? You know something? The Blacktop Bully, even on a video monitor, my blood pressure went through the roof. The guy scares me, and then you throw the judge into the mix and... And Wayne the Train Bloom. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the IWA, of course, has been in and out of the local wrestling scene for several years, and we're going to be showing you some of those classic IWA matches, as you heard them talk about, and certainly you want to stay tuned for that into the coming year. Paybon, keep that bully away from me. I promise you I will not be here anymore if I know the bully is anywhere in the vicinity. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, this is a great pleasure. We watched this man right from his very start in professional wrestling. And actually, when he broke into the sport, very clean, scientific wrestler, Eddie Sharkey. As a matter of fact, at the American Indian Center, pulled me to the side and said, watch this kid. You're not going to believe his talents. He's going to be the next Ric Flair. Maybe overstating the case, maybe not. Because over the past year, year and a half, he has developed into an outstanding professional wrestler, not only on the local level, but also making a tremendous name for himself in Japan. I'm talking about luscious Lenny Lane. In my estimation, of course, 
latching on to Mortimer Plumtree and his four strings might have been a mistake, but you can't argue with success. This man is a tremendously gifted athlete, and because of that, pro wrestling today and everybody involved with the program has decided unanimously that the Independent Wrestler of the Year here in the state of Minnesota is Luscious Lenny Lane. We're going to show you a music video and a great one that was put together, of course, by Al Pabon, and then we're going to show you Lenny Lane in action. Yet another war, ladies and gentlemen. Take a look at the Independent Wrestler of the Year from the state of Minnesota, Luscious Lenny Lane. an awful lot of blood. Nick, that blood is running directly into his eyes. I'm surprised he can see to wrestle. Horace wouldn't even allow a one count there. All the way across the ring. Here goes Lenny. Oh! Nobody home! Nobody home! And now Horace on an offense here. What a seesaw battle back on the clothesline. Oh, God! He drilled the back of Horace's head into the canvas. Mick, we are not even 10 minutes into this match, and both wrestlers are spent. And both announcers. What 
an incredible matchup. Horace with the block, pounding away at that open wound. Oh, what a close line. What a close line. Oh, my God. On the ring apron. I tell you what, this might be the match of the year we're looking at right now. Every time these two wrestle, it's a candidate for the match of the year. And here they go again. imploring these two to get back into the ring. Oh, he posted him right into the ring post. Now what's it? Don't start dragging me into this. What's this Lenny Lane? Where in the world is he getting this intestinal fortitude? I don't know. He's a thinking mass wrestler. He just stuck back into the ring to start over the tension. That's out. nothing to do with wrestling, Chris Beatty. This is all out of order. No, 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 on no, the, no. The remains of the table. No. Oh, oh, wait a second. Horace. Wait a minute. He backed. Oh, he got him. He got it. Oh. Oh, this is this match defies description. And I'm stunned that the luscious lady here walks around the ring with that perpetual smile on her face when her man is a bloody mess. Well, let's face it. Horace is showing his interest in her. She's got two men fighting over her. Oh, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Horace has been lacerated as oh well. God. Both men now. Both men are pouring blood. I tell you what, I don't know how this is going to look on television. Not the greatest lighting in this building, but maybe you're better off. Whoa! the toe of that boot, and on the forehead, and then with that savant kick, body press, this one's over, count of two, three, oh, these two men, every single time they step into the ring, they tear each other apart, you talk about these two making it to the big time, they might be too injured to get to the big time when they're done with each other, this, this night, there's a snap mare to the canvas. And ladies, oh, a thumb right to the eye. We remind you, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to see Horace the Psychopath, part of that big American Wrestling Federation card at Fred Moore Middle School in Anoka, Minnesota, October 19th, part of the Pumpkin Brawl, a 12-man battle royal, Tito Santana, Sergeant Slaughter will be in town. Don't miss it, October 19th, 6.30 at Fred Moore in Anoka. This is just a taste of what you're going to see that night. Look at that! Oh, God! Phenomenal matchup. And now both men on the floor. Al Pabon taking you right up close. Both of these wrestlers, ladies and gentlemen, severely lacerated. I don't know. I don't know where they are getting the staying power. Oh, you don't even want to be close to this. Whiplash City as he slapped that head into the table. They have brought the house down here. They have absolutely brought into the post again. Now, I don't like this one bit. There's lots of expensive equipment around here. I'm looking at Buck Rock and Roll Zoom off across the ring, watching this one. His mouth is a is a gape here. He's in awe of this. Where's Horace taking them now? They are busted open, both of these men. Oh, and Horace is unloading. What's he got? It? What Wait a that? second, what is this? Trying for the suplex? Oh my god! Oh my god! They just broke! 
There's a small boy with what's on that table. And I've that was half a table. I've seen it all. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you this is one of the greatest wrestling matches, one of the greatest wars I've ever seen in any promotion. Don't talk to me about the hype in pro wrestling. This is the real deal. Please, dear God, let this footage turn out. Because you're watching. Oh. Happy Holidays, Happy New Year from Plum Tree Enterprises from the very depths of my red, rich heart to yours. 1997 is upon us. Ding dong. Open the door. Let it in. Let it come on in. There are going to be some changes this year, I promise you. And I want you to watch this tape at the end of this year to see if they haven't come true. The analyst, the genius, the strategist that I am, I am predicting success. Continued success for Plum Tree Enterprises this year, and let me tell you in what ways. The one night stand, luscious Lenny Lane, Triple L, is going to finally have his day in the sun. His day in the spotlight, WCW, Eric Bischoff calling me every day, trying to find the money that's acceptable to Plum Tree Enterprises. 
to secure luscious Lenny Lane. The WWF knocking on the door. Vince McMahon, open it up, let him in. Wants luscious Lenny Lane. AWF Paul Elferstein already having fantasies about what kind of success he would have with the Triple L in his federation. And the whole way in, Plumtree's going to be riding with him, right alongside. <laughs> Horace the Psychopath, I've got a wish for you too. I've got a wish that you make it to one of the big three. The AWF, the WWF, or WCW, you know why. Why would I be generous enough to wish that upon you? Because I want to embarrass you on a national level, on an international level, in front of everybody. I want to see you bleed, sweat, bones crunching all over the world so I can embarrass and humiliate you just a little bit more. Call me sick, call me demented, but I love it. I enjoy it. I love hearing you cry and moan every night when luscious Lenny Lane puts the Dreamweaver on you and puts you right out on the mat. That's my wish for you. J.B. Trask, I wish simply that you regain your respect that you once had, that you get back on your feet, you get off that couch, put down the beer, put down the cigarettes, make a name for yourself once again. Put a title belt around your waist if you can. I don't care what you have to do. If you have to go into treatment, if you have to go into psychiatric counseling, get some help. Get back on the road to success. Plumtree wants you to be there for us, to help Luscious Lenny Lane uphold the charge that we have driven so far to hold up the banner of Plumtree Enterprises. We need you, JB, to help Lenny. We need you to fend off all these pathetic wretches, these excuses of human debris. Keep them at bay. Mick Karsh, I, I have a wish for you too. I have a wish that you stay in the AWF, that Paul Elperstein will keep you as long as he'll have you. Why? To keep you out of my face, to keep you out of my backyard, to keep you out of my territory. I own it. I run it. You stay out. You stay down in Tampa, Florida, for all I care. You go to Chicago. You go to New York. Go to California. Go to your cauliflower alley clubs. I don't care. Just stay out of my face because, frankly, I'm getting a little tired of you. Al Pabon, I wish a lifetime supply of White Castle cheeseburgers. He needs a switch. McDonald's has gotten monotonous for him. He needs to switch over to White Castle. God love him for all that he's done for Plumtree Enterprises. Videotaping us from town to town, arena to arena. Putting us across the television screens of Minnesota, the Dakotas, Iowa, Wisconsin. This frozen tundra wasteland has been enlightened because of Al Pavon. And Plumtree Enterprises is climbing that ladder, that little pinnacle peak to success. 1997 is going to be my year. If it wasn't in 96, it certainly is now. NPW, we're going to bring the belt back. PWA, we'll take your belt too. The WWF, WCW, AWF, we're coming after you as well. 1997, my goodness, I'm looking good. And here we go, one more year. Championship glory, Plum Tree Enterprises. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back to wrap up what has been a very, very special and a very enjoyable two hours of professional wrestling action as we've taken a look back at the year 1996 in professional wrestling. You know, in conclusion, I've got to tell you, this sport over the years has had its ups and its downs. You know, in the 1950s, professional wrestling in the state of Minnesota, right here in the Twin Cities, when all we had was minor league baseball and, uh, and that type thing, took center stage on the newspapers when the Twins and the Vikings moved in in 1960, 61. All of a sudden, you started to see less and less coverage of professional wrestling in the newspapers. But by God, year after year after year, there it is on television. Professional wrestling, I, I don't think that there is a, a state in the country, any villa, any village, any city, any town, where there isn't pro wrestling on at least once or twice a week in some venue, whether it's on cable television, syndicated TV, 
or cable access. Pro wrestling is always there. There's a uniqueness to it. Uh, professional wrestling fans are, uh, they stick together like glue. You know, you might like ECW. You might like the chairs and the tables and the hammers and the shovels and what have you. That may be your cup of tea, and that's great. You might like the World Wrestling Federation. You might like the hard-nosed Steve Austin. You might like Monday Night Raw. You might like Jerry Lawler. You might think it's absurd. You might think that Steve Austin uh, going over to Brian Pillman's house and Pillman pulling a gun on him is a little far-fetched for television. You're probably right. Then again, you might love it. 